Alright guys, I just finished eating some food. Well, I'm not really finished with it, but I ate the most that I could. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, uh, not exactly record, but a replica, but kind of like styled mission. So the best size uh, that I like um, is a 3.75 meter part, which is kind of like, um, you know, the biggest part for people who don't have the DLC I'm making history one so this is actually a really big rocket and if you've ever seen like a side by side comparison of like Falcon 9 and um the space shuttle well not in person but uh like in those size comparison videos you'll know that it's pretty big so first on the fairing I like to keep it the same old white color and you kind of want it to have a little bit out but not too much until it lets you then you just want to go really just straight for a while like about there and then you just want to slowly um kind of make it go in Now you have to, uh, if you've seen my space shuttle video, then you know that it's pretty difficult, well at least for me, making the fairings because they always curve off too early and they end up looking nothing uh, like, the, like the real life version. So we can just... Go ahead and do that. Now, uh, to make it more, you know, kind of, um, what is it called? Historical replica or something like that. You can put individual flags with each letters um, because there's no flag part that's big enough to put on the SpaceX logo. So now you just want to put one of these um, S3 tanks and then this 36 tank and there's no large vacuum engine for the um, Merlin so what I like to use is the uh, where is it the Rhino it's a pretty nice uh, engine because it's kind of like the skipper where it can still uh, of course work on sea level but it works a lot better in space and kind of low atmosphere so then this is where all of uh, this is like kind of the fun part of a Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy so you just want to take the largest part, which would be this uh, 144 tank. Let's shoot and stack up a whole lot of them. And I should probably close that door real quick, so I'll be right back. I am back and I've closed that door, so hopefully you won't hear any background noise. I really should put one of those um, noise reductors that are made out of foam on my microphone. Right now, uh, nobody sees my videos, so I don't really care. So let's just go ahead and put this tank at the bottom. And since we can't use the small version of the a Merlin engine. I keep wanting to say Raptor. That's not the right, the correct engine. And my dog just opened the door. So now, as you can see, we have a pretty good TWR and quite a lot of Delta V. So now, what we want to do is, if you want, to, you can actually use the regular stock landing legs. But as you can see, they're just not really big enough. So, what I'd like to do is. Um, 
Where could it be? You're going to need the uh, Robotics uh, Breaking Ground DLC to be able to do this, but you take the largest alligator hinge. And I like to use the 4 times symmetry, but if you want, you can make it 3. Uh, it's just not, like, I'm not able to get it big enough. Then you just want to... Now, you can make your own, like, kind of custom part out of wing parts. And to make it kind of more durable, you could use the landing gear. But one kind of durable part that I like to use for landing legs and things like that. I've actually seen a Reddit post where somebody made a custom lander with it. You just need to go to structural. And this requires the other DLC too. And you get the second smallest uh, structural panels. You just want to make it symmetrical. And put a couple more of those. <clears throat> Sorry for the bad voice. And about four to three is good. You might, uh, depending on, you know, the rocket, you might need a little bit more, a little bit less. But then you just take the structural panel, or the little uh, triangle version. And since, you know, the angle limit is uh, all the way 180 degrees, which is pretty bad, what I like to do is set it to 120. And it's a pretty nice number because um, no matter what engine you're using, you know, um, you won't hit these. And also, <clears throat> it's not going to be, like, way too uh, down low and, like, possible of tipping over. <clears throat> And then you just want to take, oh, well, that's already at zero. So we can just react, retract those for now. And since the, well, Block 5 Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy have uh, kind of black landing legs, unlike the previous Falcon 9s, you can color that uh, that way. But I'm just going to do that to make it, you know, kind of more modern, I guess. And since we don't have stock grid fins, now you could make your own. I saw this, um, this Falcon 9 on Steam that used non-functional but still cool looking um, grid fins made out of these grip strips set to the lowest light, um, and also the landing legs were made out of that. So if you want, you could also put grid, uh, grip strips on the landing legs. But uh, I think what a lot of people agree on doing is putting air brakes. Now, uh, four air brakes is quite a bit, but it's not really enough. So what I like to do is put, you know, a pair or so, like that. And I can just offset them to make it more in line. And of course, uh, I forgot to do this, but you should probably take this off. And what I used to do would uh, be taking these engine plates, but that it has a decoupler on it. So uh, as again, you need to go over here to structure and put the correctly sized structural tube. If you want, you can put monopropellant in there. But I choose um, to just have verniers because those are a lot stronger. So as you can see, we have a lot of empty room. They're the largest remote guidance unit. Uh, you don't really need the largest battery pack. But of course, you'll still need enough electricity. So what I like to do is just put a couple solar panels here on the sides. I like to put them diagonally so that there's nothing in the way of them. And if you want, you can put a couple uh, radial batteries 
right here. And uh, you're probably going to need an SAS unit, an SAS wheel, because uh, even with the monopropellant, I mean the verniers, verniers, you're still going to have a lot of tipping over, which has led to many disasters. But I feel like that's too much. So we're going to have to go for something else. Um, I'll go ahead and put that Caminatron on there. That's good. I'm going to close the door again. You can still probably hear it, just ignore it. Um, we want to put that back on. And we will just go to command and control, get these runners for time symmetry. And I, since there's three of these air brakes, what I like to do is put um, like about three of these runners. That's good. And then of course, all the way at the bottom, you want to have a couple of them too. So let me just put a little bit of hidden ones there. You want to make sure that it's not at the center, uh, above the center of mass, or, yeah, that. It's kind of, well, that's good enough. And the engine gimbal will also be enough to not, for you not to need any of the, uh, of wing parts, which is pretty nice because in real life it doesn't have any winglets either. And that is about it, and you could add a couple other things. But, um, if you're going to use the hinges and the hinges only, because for that, um, same Falcon 9 that I saw in the Steam Workshop, uh, the person used, uh, docking ports so that they wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, kind of, because these aren't very strong, even the biggest ones. So basically what I'm trying to say is you have to have the least amount of fuel in your bottom stage in order for it to actually land correctly. And that is about, well, of course, we're going to need to put a payload. Let's put a little bit of electricity. <clears throat> Why not some solar panels? And a um, decoupler. Ah, uh, that's too big. Um, this small one. And for reference point, we're just going to use the Jumbo Rocket Max. Jumbo, uh, whatever it's called. And this is 36 tanks, but Falcon, um, if you want, we do have a little bit of room and we still have a lot of TWR left. So you could just add some radial booster, um, fuel tanks right here. And then close to orange. How much is that? Four and a half tons. That's like. Wait. Doing a little bit of part clipping. And math. Uh, 20. Yeah, that's about close enough to 50 tons. So now what we can do is just launch. Now this, uh, I don't have to do as much testing as with my Falcon, uh, I mean with my space shuttle. It's a little bit less complicated. You don't have to mess around with torque and uh, TWR, things like that. So we can just wait for it to load. Now, what you could do is uh, start your gravity turn with the booster, and then 
Wait, uh, what can, we can do is that, er, well, what happens is that the booster just falls right back over here near the space center. Um, but if you were to turn and not boost back, which is what they do in real life, uh, you would just end up in the ocean. So, um, what I just do is I just go straight up, but I'm just going to do something different. Oh my god, I forgot my stretch. So, remember, you're going to have stretch freeze. You can see, there's a little bit of wobbling. And wobbling is not good in rockets. If you've ever seen the, um... The, the rocket where... Uh, during the space race... Where we tried to send a one kilogram payload into orbit. And it was just super flimsy. And it kind of just snapped in half. Yeah, that's practically what's going to happen. And it's just already happened. Yep. This is a pretty good rocket. Not gonna lie. You know what? I guess I'll see you later.